All right, guys. Quick update. I've been sitting here rocking for the last two hours just watching the birds. I figure I'd give you guys a quick update. We're officially off the dark. Today was the last day. There we go. There we go. Nothing like scaring them up a little bit. They'll be back down. They've been doing this back and forth, back and forth for the last couple hours. But so far, so good. We have 92 in our race team this year. Honestly, I can't, I can't talk about the settling cage more on the results of that. It's, I mean, this year compared to last year, same time, I'd had, I had half this number of birds. And don't, and mind you, I'm gonna lose a good amount once the road training starts. You know, I've, you know, this is only the beginning. Last year I bred over 100, and I started with 57. This year I've probably had 100, 110, and I have 92 right now settled. Copper, give him a break, buddy. Come on, sit down. So I'm prepared to lose a few more, but compared to last year this time, we have a lot of pigeon, and that's good. That's a good start. Um, everybody's doing okay. Knock on wood. I don't want to jinx myself. The health has been good this year. Uh, I did have a handful get light on me, and I went ahead and removed them from the birds. Um, just not worth it. Not worth, you know, risking my entire team for one or two pigeons. Um, oddly enough though I wanted to share something with you guys uh, I had a pair of birds that bred me uh, four youngsters themselves and on the third round I used them as pumpers uh, one thing I wanted to mention is when the when I had my my first round when I moved them over uh, and they were doing good I had a couple go light uh, and I eventually removed one of those birds was a youngster off that that pair uh, when I moved my second round, when I weaned my second round from the parents and moved them into the section, I also had a few birds go light after a few weeks. And it just so happened that one of those was off the same pair, just a second round youngster. Well, a few weeks ago, I had another bird go light and I removed. And uh, oddly enough, it was the youngster that they, I used them as pumpers. The youngster came off of a different pair, but they were the pair that pumped that, that set of eggs and raised that youngster. So three rounds out of that pair, and I lost one from each round. And what's odd about the situation or the story is that that pair were my best raising pair. I mean, the youngsters were full all the time, large. I mean, they were the largest youngsters in the bowl compared to the rest. And I bred almost 20 pair of birds this year. And I even made a point to show a few guys, I'm like, look how large these youngsters are growing equally. If I didn't ban them within the first three, four days, you weren't getting bans on them. That's how fast and well they grew, how fast, how, I mean, how well they fed them. And I lost both out of the first and second and one that they pumped. I mean, take it for face value, I guess, I don't know. Obviously, I'm not going to keep that pair. It's just not worth it. I'm not sure what the deal is. Mind you, I did go through the same process with all my birds at the beginning of the year in terms of medicating and canker and worming and all that. And I have not had an issue. Uh, yes, I have had other birds go light and I removed before it became an issue. Copper, come here, buddy. Copper is going inside the pigeon cage and that's no good. Good boy. Uh, but just the fact that these, I mean, this pair of birds raised two rounds of their own youngsters and I lost two out of each round or one out of each round and then I used them as pumpers because they they raised so well I figured perfect pair and I lost one out of them and it's just unbelievable man I just I it, you know it's one of those things where this year I'm paying attention to where last year I did not pay attention to um, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that the one young the mother to these babies was from 2017 when we had that real heavy outbreak so i don't know if that's one of those medicated and survived birds and now is a carrier of something maybe um again they didn't they weren't sick they didn't i didn't remove them i didn't call them because they were sick i called them because they got light to the point that even if they did recover there was no point they wouldn't have made it anyway you know what i mean i mean only pigeon guys would understand what i'm saying so before I even wasted any time medicating or trying to bring them back into health, I went ahead and called them. They just, they didn't have what it took. And in the sport of racing, 
those are the decisions you have to make. I mean, there's no point in bringing a bird around, and I definitely don't want the birds to do anything while on medication. I mean, if they can't perform without, that's not what I want to keep. Now, I hope that makes sense uh, to most of you guys, because I know some people keep pigeons as pets, and obviously if a bird gets sick, you want to medicate it, you want to help it. Um, I don't keep them as pets. There's no way I can keep you know, almost 200 pigeons as pets. Uh, these are performing birds and I need them to perform uh, and I want and I want them to perform uh, on their own I don't want any additives I don't want any helpers any boosters of any sort um, I want natural immunity I want them to have it uh, and if they don't then they're just gonna be removed before they get lost and starve in, in the wild anyway um, again the only thing I can really think of um, is if the, the the milk that the parents produce at the beginning stages of a youngster's life if that milk is somehow bad or tainted or I, I'm, I'm not sure how I would phrase that uh, but it's just odd just odd that they raised six youngsters and I lost one from every round one youngster made it one didn't and I don't understand why uh, again, I'm not going to dig too deep into it. I'm just not going to keep the pair any longer. Uh, it's one of those, like I said, one of those notations I'm going to make and keep. So at the end of the year, I know what to get rid of. Uh, they still may be very good birds, but I just, I don't have the time to deal with birds that can't, uh, you know, they, they don't have natural immunity. You know, they can't raise a, a good youngster because you're just going to set yourself further and further behind. Um, you know, it, it comes with time. If this was the case in 2017 when I started, I would have been medicating. I would have probably kept that same pair, assuming the youngsters do well. Uh, but now, at, at this stage in my racing career, let's use that, um, you know, I guess I have a bit more discipline and I know that what I want and what I don't want. And I don't want to constantly chase sick pigeons. If they can't, you know, come out with natural immunity or some sort of immunity I understand they're gonna get sick I understand respiratory is gonna be a big issue once I start racing uh, but the point I'm trying to make is if they can't literally survive without medication I don't want them that's not what I want um, again I hope that makes sense because for some people they're pets um, and for pigeon guys they know you guys understand what I'm trying to say but don't mean to make this video go too long like I said I'm just here rocking away watching the birds I'll be calling them here for feed in, in a few minutes. Like I said, they've all been, they've all pretty much come down, hanging around. Um, I noticed in the few videos back, uh, a gentleman made a comment about wires and I should be careful where I release my birds on training tosses. Um, as you can see, uh, they have uh, quite a bit of an obstacle course, literally just coming out of the loft. So I'm not too afraid of wires. I mean, it's nature of the beast, I guess. If they can't figure it out in their own backyard, uh, you know, they're not gonna make it very far out there where you know wires come out of nowhere um, just so you guys see what I'm dealing with here I hate them they're an eyesore but it is what it is but on the flip side I do have the light and the light helps me out at night I can watch the birds I can watch to see if I can oh something's coming no I guess not all right guys we'll catch you on the next one so I just wanted to introduce you guys to 44 44 and I have become pretty good buddies in the last couple months. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. What's up, buddy? Oh, yeah. That's right. Now, unlike my buddy Manny, who hand feeds his babies, he was never hand fed. He just has a way about him. Just a funny personality. He likes me and I like him. He's very well bred. He comes out of one of my uh, red cockbirds, a son of the mosaic. And his mother actually took an 11th position in the GHC Classic a few years ago. So as you can imagine, you know, the top 50 birds in that race are pretty phenomenal. So he's well bred, we'll see how he does. But more than anything, it's just his personality. I don't get too many pigeons like this. Uh, again, I don't spend a lot of time with my birds. You know, he's got uh, five other siblings and none of them are like him. He's 
kind of a special buddy.